Rick Hartzell, Sam Croft, and Stan Rode, our referees today. Mr. Hartzell to toss it in the air, and we are underway. Rob Cameron and Duke wins the tip. Both of these teams primarily man-to-man -man defensive team, and this is a very interesting matchup for Mackey right off the bat. Leitner controlling, powers up against Geiger and scoring. That's an awfully difficult matchup for Mackey, and here comes Duke with some pressure. To midcourt, John Berry looking at the basket and ties the game. Bob, we talked about transition defense against the Duke defense. You'd work a long time to get a shot like Berry just got. Excellent conversion and transition by Georgia Tech. Ryan Davis handling it outside, and it goes to Leighton. Thomas Hill had the big game against Maryland Wednesday and hits his first jump shot today. Four two doubles. Georgia Tech attacking after beating the initial pressure. Out of bounds to Duke. Travis Best that time taking it into an awful lot of tall traffic in there was not able to get the shot to go and then Mackey couldn't control the rebound. I think early in this basketball game as we watch the game develop Brian Davis is very effective playing from the perimeter and heading toward the basket. Mackey's going to be hard pressed to stay with him. Thomas Hill is open. Underneath here is Grant Hill reversing. Acrobatic move for the Western Virginia sophomore. 6 2 2. Boy, what a play by Best. And Hurley comes up with it. Bobby looking to push it up the floor. Shovels. Here. And a foul. will be on Matt Geiger. It's his first. It's the way a basketball game goes sometimes. It looked like Georgia Tech, thanks to a nifty move by Best to get through the press, had an easy layup, but Forrest dropped the ball, and Duke really likes to attack, and they attacked effectively. Brian Davis, just a terrific job at the line so far this year, 91%. He had 16 against the Yellow Jackets in Cameron last year. We go off to an early five-point lead, and Davis makes it six, eight to two, a minute and a half into the game. And here Duke changes the pressure just a little bit, a man-to-man, -man, and now Hill comes to trap. But they were in zone pressure, they switched to man-to-man. -man. Geiger gets open from the foul line. Matt Geiger. Well, the Tech's had a couple of runs of the easy shots, but the Duke transition game. Grant Hill scoring again. It's now 10 to 4. Bob, we talked about the transition, and Duke has really done a great job in the transition. Georgia Tech is going to have to do a better job getting back and playing defense. Forrest is open. Leitner claims it. Christian averaging just about six and a half boards a game. What a pass from Hurley. Davis couldn't convert it, and Georgia Tech's Mackey with a rebound. But again, there's Duke with a point-blank range shot. Three-pointer for Barry, and John nails it. He's got five of Georgia Tech's seven. Barry is going to make some big plays. Duke's going to find him and hope that he doesn't make too many of them. A lob into Leitner. And Forrest had him bottled up, but now we've got a traveling call by Grant Hill. Mike Krzyzewski signaling for rather a different call in his opinion. Playing in front of Leitner, the lob pass goes in. Forrest coming to help. It's going to be a very difficult way to play Leitner because as Forrest comes to help, somebody's got to be open. Leitner that time elected to take the shot and got it blocked. Forrest, air ball, rebound to Grant Hill. Hurley. And Geiger tough on the boards. It's fifth of the ACC in rebounding coming into this game. Georgia Tech starting to assert itself a little bit on the boards, as you would expect with that size that they have inside. Man to man for the Blue Devils. Double team coming from Davis. Davis matched up inside against Geiger. That's an awfully tough matchup for Davis. And they go right to Andy. He misses the back shot. It's out of bounds to do. Blue Devils in front, 10-7. Yeah. 
We've seen early in the ball game Duke take advantage of the Duke strengths. That time Georgia Tech, even though Geiger didn't make the basket, had it inside against Brian Davis. That's to the advantage of Georgia Tech. Thomas Hill outside. Here's Hurley driving. A long shadow of uh, Matt Geiger that time, and now it comes back to Grant Hill. Well, it's tough going inside. Duke looking to spread the defense, but now we've got a foul called on Travis Benz. Of course, you get those big guys from Georgia Tech, and if they're allowed to plant and not have to move on the defensive end inside, they're going to clog it up pretty good. Here you see Forrest matched up against Grant Hill. There's Best grabbing Hill, Thomas Hill, and moving him out of the way. Hurley, the runner, and Matt Geiger with the block, but it cost him two points. So Hurley's first bucket of the game, and Duke leads by five. 50-57 left in the first half. And we'll return after this word from Pepsi. Duke with a five-point lead early in the game, primarily because they've been able to get some easy opportunities. We talked about Grant Hill and his ability to get them. He leads Duke with 23 dunks. No dunk that time, but a very acrobatic move off the fast break. Grant Hill continues to blossom. He's really one of the most talented players, not only in this league, but in the country. He's having a sensational season, averaging almost 18 a game in ACC play. He's got four so far. Duke leads by five. And Geiger runs it down in the corner. Draws the double team. And it goes Mackey. Turns and scores. Grant Hill went to double team Geiger, but I don't think they want to double team Geiger at the corner and leave Mackey all alone under the basket. Georgia Tech will make him pay for that one every time. Thomas Hill. And uh, ran into a lot of gold shirts that time. Kicked by Geiger out of bounds. Pretty good defensive reaction by Georgia Tech because Duke moved the ball well offensively on that particular series, but they weren't able to get an open shot. Left alone, Thomas Hill, short with the three. And a strong rebound for Mackey. He picks off just about 10 a game. Georgia Tech has not had too many opportunities to get out on the break. They did that time. Duke got back well. And Geiger pushed. And as he caught the ball. Well, now, if you're Duke, you're hoping that everybody feels that the big guys are just clumsy and they're going to fall down. But the officials in this particular play are not fooled. Geiger with the good cut. That's an awfully tough pass from Barry. That's really a break for Georgia Tech that Hill commits the push right there. Ever dream of putting together the all-ACC dream team? Well, stay tuned at halftime. And true value will tell you how. 12-9. Duke in front here. 15-11 left in the first half. In a game like this, Bob, it's not all that important to make the great plays, but to make the easy plays that are available. Georgia Tech forced it a little bit that time. They're lucky to keep the ball. Back. Again. And it stays in for him. He's got four points. A lot of congestion with those big folks inside. And there's that inside power of Georgia Tech. Leitner was forced to come and help against Geiger. That left Mackey alone. He was able to claim two rebounds and finally score. Christian strong to the bucket. 14 11 2. Forrest with the runner. Forrest really struggled the other night at NC State. Great pass. <laughs> Georgia Tech would certainly like to get something from Forrest early in this game. Geiger shuts off Leitner, but now Brian Davis going to work. And yeah. that's a foul, though, called on Malcolm Mackey. Thus far, early in the basketball game, Duke has been able to isolate that young man right there out on the wing with Malcolm Mackey, and he's just too quick for Mackey out there. Tony Lang is coming in. The sophomore from Mobile, and Brian Davis goes to the bench. Thomas Hill, three from the corner. Short hit the side of the glass. Hill gets it back. This is Grant Hill, and that's a block on Geiger. We talked about Georgia Tech's size and how all that inside power could cause problems for the Blue Devils, but we also well, talked about Duke's Mike diversity and their quickness. That time, Grant Hill just beat Geiger to the baseline. He wasn't quick enough to cut it off. He gets the foul his second. The Duke lead is three, 14-15 left in the first hand. Georgia Tech zone against the inbounds pass underneath, 2-3 zone. Early has struggled from three-point range this year. Thomas Hill picked it up a notch at Maryland on Wednesday. 
Apparently struggled overall, but he's made some big ones when they needed it. Absolutely. Lang climbs it off, and the rebound comes to James Forrest. Georgia Tech within three with the basketball. Boy, Lang and Geiger really going at one another. Geiger's got to be very, very careful, and there's Hurley coming up with the steal. Ahead, Thomas Hill. Too strong. Tech coming back, three on three. Barry and Leitner reached down and poked it away. And he's leading the break. Early, though, will push it up instead. Weaves through traffic. Had it rejected, and Barry's got a breakaway. John Barry. Seven points for John. And Georgia Tech within one. Everybody out on the court looks like they're dragging a little bit, Bob. There's an awful lot of up and down play there. I think Hurley, once he got inside, got up in the air and had to shoot the ball because nobody broke open underneath the basket. Those great big guys from Georgia Tech can really clog up the inside. Leitner draws a crowd defensively. Hurley. Lang inside. Best got a hand on it. That's really a nice play by Best. Generally, a guard inside isn't going to take it from a big guy unless the big guy dribbles it. But that time, Best slapped it out of the hands of Lang and didn't foul. And I think in doing so, he may have saved Geiger his third personal foul. Bobby Cremins gets Geiger out of the game. Newbill comes back in. Leitner and Thomas Hill are out for Duke, but uh, Marty Clark, I think, came from out of bounds. They may have stepped out. That's and a pretty well turned out. Conceived out of bounds play. You hide a guy on the bench and then run him in bounds. Later. <laughs> the lonesome end. Marty <laughs> Clark. 14 13. Duke. But Georgia Tech has a chance to get the lead here. Georgia Tech fell behind early 10 to 4, but they played well. And Forrest puts it home. His first basket of the game, and Georgia Tech leads by a point. Interesting lineup in the ball game right now for Duke. Parks on the floor, Clark on the floor, Lang on the floor. Not a lot of experience there along with Hurley and Grant Hill. Here's Cherokee Parks for two. I would think that basket will do wonders for his confidence. Taking it right to him. On the defensive end, he's drawn a tough assignment. Mackey spins, forced, or rather Newbill crashing. And a foul has been called on Duke. And it will go against oh, well, Antonio Lang, his first. Lang, his first. 11-59 left here in the first half. Brian Hill coming into the game now for Georgia Number Tech. 11, Brian Hill into the lineup for... And we've got a tap out on the floor with Duke in front of Georgia Tech, 16-15. We'll be back. But now this word from our good friends at Budweiser. And as expected, a tight game between the two ACC leaders. A big guy gets open by standing inside and waiting for the ball, right? Not so. Parks gets it outside. The ball, good ball movement by Duke, and then the cut. Big guy's got to move. Parks showing you that he's got the ability to move and get open. Coming from the perimeter inside, excellent ball movement, good position by Parks. The reason for the delay, the two coaches were brought out to the scores table and had a quick conference with lead man Rick Hartzell. The battery is about cleared up, and we're ready for Georgia Tech to put it in. There's a problem with the horn, and they'll be using the air horn at the scorer's table. <laughs> That'll be entertaining. As noisy as it can get in here, you can't hear the regular horn sometimes. Grab his best three-pointer. His first basket of the game, and Georgia Tech has its biggest lead, 18-16. Georgia Tech back to the man-to-man -man defense now. Good defense by Brian here. A lot of hills in this game. Near steal, Clark and Hill collide. It's out of bounds to Duke. 23 seconds on the shot clock. Bob, and we talked a little bit about it before the game, but Georgia Tech actually has a bench that they can play this year, and they can bring some people off the bench who contribute. New Bill in the ball game right now, Brian Hill. Early drive, and that was slapped by Mackey. to give the bucket to Hurley. With this lineup in the ballgame for Duke, I believe you have to look for Hurley and Grant Hill to provide the offensive leadership. Hurley taking it right to the basket. Tied at 18. Mackey really working on Parks inside. Blocked from behind by Grant Hill. 
This is Brian Hill for Georgia Tech, and he's fouled, and it's a charge. Excellent defensive recognition by Duke that time. You have to recognize who's out there. Hill is going to drive to the basket lane, getting in excellent position, drawing the charge. Hill is not a guy who is going to pull up and shoot that three-pointer. He's going to take it to the basket. Duke recognizes. Lang steps over and draws the charge very effectively. Fourth Georgia Tech turnover, and they fronted Leitner once again. This time, Georgia Tech comes up with the ball. I think a little bit better pass, and Leighton has a dunk on that particular play. Just didn't quite get it high enough up in the air. That's sort of the double-edged sword in fronting Leighton in the low post. <laughs> well, they came up with a turnover that time. Tie game at 18. Jaron Perry with the honors. Travis Best has done a nice job early in this ball game handling the pressure that he's gotten from Bobby Hurley. Not too many better than Bobby Hurley at putting pressure on the ball. Lang up on Newbill. Sneaks into the lane, got a great pass, and laid it in. That's a good cut by Barry, Bob, but great composure by Travis Best to not panic when he picked up his dribble. Barry helps his teammate out, but that was a great pass. Thomas Hill. Now they work it back out front. Leitner powers up, and a block shot that time for Georgia Tech, and give it to Mackey. We talked about Mackey before the ball game. Leitner with that explosive step to the basket for a big guy, but Mackey was waiting for him. Malcolm, six in the league in block shots. Travis Best nails another three-pointer. A five-point Georgia Tech lead. And that young man, Best, I, you can just see his confidence building as this ball game goes on. He's figured out, hey, I can handle this. He's now got two three-point baskets. Duke a little stagnant on the offensive end. Leitner lays it home. Leitner gets himself a bucket because he doesn't dribble the ball. Barry coming for the steal, but Leitner never gave him the opportunity. Great catch and basket. John Barry off the dribble, banks it home. He's got double figures already. 11 points in 11 minutes. For most guys, you would say that's not a good shot. A runner sliding to the baseline, but that's the kind of shot that Barry takes, and he can make them, and when he makes them, they're usually a big play. Duke was getting some easy buckets in transition. Clark's got a wide open jumper, and he parries this one, but they have been a little stagnant in the half court offense. A lot of Duke's offense comes from their defense, and Georgia Tech has been taking pretty good care of the basketball. Lang is going to foul <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to get away with that too often. Mackey does a great job establishing his position inside and not being moved. And when he moves this, this decisively, the referee is going to take notice. Be sure to stay tuned at halftime for the Norwegian Cruise Line Trivia Contest. You can win a great cruise for two. To the ACC's heavyweight, toe to toe. 8:39 left, first half. Georgia Tech by three. Geiger right under the bucket to Fred Vincent. And Fred with a soft touch outside. Missed this one. The tip won't go. The Chief, Cherokee Parks, claims the rebound. And Duke now matches up size-wise with Georgia Tech. They're just as big as Leitner and Parks. Barry trying to gum things up. Great, great pass. Tremendous lay-in for Parks on the beautiful feed. Again, though, Parks moving without the basketball, getting himself open. Great pass by Hill. Inside, Leitner fighting for position and couldn't get around Newbill fast enough. That'll be the first foul on Christian. He has been to the barber since practice yesterday. Yes, too. indeed. He, <laughs> he goes to the same barber as Montross. <laughs> Thomas Hill with that pass over his shoulder. Again, Parks, though, cutting to the basket. Everybody sort of standing around waiting for the whistle to blow, but there was no whistle and a good no whistle. Forrest. Easy inbounds entry pass and lane. Well, you don't see that against Duke very often. Mike Shusevsky barking at his players right at the moment. He doesn't like to see that. 27 24, Georgia Tech. Leitner puts his elbow and uh, shoulder into Geiger, but drew the third foul on the Georgia Tech center. 
We talked about Georgia Tech's depth inside, the ability to bring New Bill off the bench and sort of remain a big team, but they've just lost that depth because Geiger picked up his third personal foul, so Mackey is going to have to come back in the basketball game. In a close basketball game, little things mean a lot, and losing a guy like Geiger for the next 746, if Bobby so chooses to keep him on the bench, he is going to throw a big wrinkle into that rotation underneath the Yellow Jam. Absolutely, Bob. One of the things that Duke does very well is they keep the pressure on them throughout a basketball game as Leighton misses the first. And sometimes that doesn't really take effect until late in the game if the other team is tired. Well, you figure if you can rotate Mackey and Geiger and Newbill in the game the entire game, then you keep them relatively fresh. But now Bobby Kremens has lost that option for the last seven minutes of the first half. And how often do you see Leighton miss two? Well, oh, here stop the presses. 86% foul shoot. Marks to Leitner. The young freshman has really given them a lift. 27 26, Georgia Tech. Mackey turns, fires, misses. Keeps it alive, though. And Forrest comes down with it, and he's fouled by Brian Davis. Krzyzewski was extremely concerned about the size of Georgia Tech and what that size would enable them to do inside. On that particular occasion, they were able to tip the ball up in the air and keep it alive until Forrest could get it. Time out on the floor, 7-14 left here in the first half. With the score, Georgia Tech 27 and Duke 26. We'll be right back. Georgia Tech with the lead and one of the reasons is watch Thomas Hill you see him looking around right there before that pass went in Thomas Hill is not shooting the basketball well Bob and what a coach wants to see is if a guy's not playing well on the offensive end that he really picks it up on the defensive end and Thomas Hill just looked lost on that particular play Georgia Tech by one Perry missing Leitner getting it long out to Hurley Grant Hill he tried to shovel maybe one pass too many Georgia Tech able to catch up and knock it away Bob I don't think it was one pass too many I think it was one pass too late Grant Hill had Davis open under the basket and didn't see him good hustle by Georgia Tech remember we talked about transition defense you saw some pretty good hustling in transition right there the Yellow Jackets leading by a point and uh, inside, Duke has scored the bulk of his points, but Leitner for three goes outside. He's got 11. Barry inside, Mackey up and over the long arms of Duke. Parks carried it out of bounds. Bob, the key to that whole play was the fact that Cherokee Parks could not get a good block out against John Barry. He missed the shot and just kept going. He missed it. It's like he knew he missed it. And then he makes this great pass inside to Mackey. Everybody's falling down in there. Parks just can't control the basketball. That's a tough break because if it doesn't hit him, it's Duke ball. He was trying to get out of the way and he fell out of bounds and the ball hit him on the way out. The Blue Devils lead it by two. Best, just one turnover here in the first half. He's done an excellent job at the point today for the Yellow Jackets against Bobby Hurley. One of the keys to the Duke defense is pressure on the basketball. When you've got a guy who's not going to react to the pressure, throws that one away. But I think Newbill Fake that was a catchable ball. Yeah. The announcers for this game selected and compensated by Ray Common Jefferson Pilot Sports. Any use of this broadcast without their express permission is prohibited. It's been a very interesting ebb and flow to this game. up score we've talked a lot about the inside strength of Georgia Tech inside strength is nothing new for the Duke Blue Devils Christian Leitner calls for the ball inside that's a great job getting position inside once new bills behind he's just totally out of the picture and then Leitner with an excellent move to the basket well, since he missed those two free throws Christian has come back with offensive vengeance the three-pointer outside and that uh, power bucket inside. Since Matt Geiger went out of the game, Duke has scored seven, eight unanswered points. That's his second personal 
He stays in the man-to-man -man defense. Parks, as we mentioned, has been very effective for Duke on both ends. Forrest. Bingo. James has six. A pretty big bucket there for the freshman. You better believe that John Barry was happy to see Forrest in a position where he could throw him the ball. <laughs> Leidner. Bingo rolls this one. We're seeing the entire arsenal from Christian Leidner. The three-point bucket and put it on the deck and just going very smoothly to the basket. Barry for three. What a first half he's had. His second three-pointer at 14 points. Both of these teams have great weapons in their arsenals, and we're seeing them all today. Here's Grant Hill. Baseline. Reversing. Nope. Leitner. How did he go with that ball? 18 for Christian Leitner. Grant Hill may have hurt himself a little. I think that was why the play was stopped. Grant Hill sort of doubled Number over. 21, Tony Lang back into the line. Leitner is a tremendous competitor, Bob, and I think those two free throws that he missed sort of caught him on fire here. That's a great move by Grant Hill. Nobody blocks that. Leitner, he takes it away from four guys. Barry, I think, got it in the chops, too. <laughs> right. If you're going to go in there, you better be prepared. Not for the weak of heart. Here's a backdoor alley. Oh! Nearly, Forrest nearly pulled that one off. Mackey, our new Bill can't convert. And here's Duke with it. They fill the lanes. Hurley takes it up and off. And we'll have a foul on Georgia Tech. Boy, that last alley-oop attempt by James Forrest was somewhat reminiscent of that Grant Hill play in the Final Four last year. We are, seeing, out. we are seeing a display of young talent out, out here. Parks has come in and done an excellent job. There's Barry still recovering from that pop that he took from that man right there, Christian Leitner. But you're right, that was a big turnaround. Forrest missed the tip. Now, it would have been a great play if he, he could have tipped in that alley-oop pass, but Newbill had the ball under the basket and missed. And then, as a result, Duke's able to get out in transition. Hurley with point number five. So if Hurley can make this, you've got a four-point turnaround on that particular play. The two Georgia Tech doesn't get, and the two that Hurley's going to give him. 38-32, Duke. Three fouls on Travis Best. He's been lost, and Georgia Tech coughs it up. Newville the foul. You could see what the loss of Travis Ben best meant to Georgia Tech right there. I guarantee you that the Georgia Tech offense against the Duke press does not involve Imbano Newbill dribbling the ball up the court. Then, of course, the big guy dribbling up. He picks up his dribble right in the trap. Duke attacking very, very effectively and draws another foul. Now, we made the point when Geiger went to the bench with three fouls about that Kremen's hands might have been tied. He couldn't afford to bring it back in. There's still 440 to go in the first half. Can you afford to have... Mr. Best on the bench for the rest of the half? Well, I think that that's a decision that you don't make right now. Obviously, it depends on the way the ball game goes for the last 440. But the pressure that Duke keeps on you, their constant attack, both offensively and defensively, one way it wears you down is it does get you in foul trouble. And Georgia Tech in some serious foul trouble now. I think John Barry becomes even more important at this juncture of the ball game. He's had such a terrific offensive game at the two spot now being called on to run the show out front. Barry still looking to score there. The dish to new bill. Turnover Georgia Tech. Now the whole thing right there was new bill was not ready to catch the ball. John Barry's penetrating to the basket. I mean that kid makes that kind of a pass all the time. New bill's got to be ready. Duke leading by seven. Showing that 2 3 zone that we've seen a couple of times today. Brian Davis, two pointer. What a shot for Brian. 40% coming into the game. Duke is running up to nine, and Bobby Cremens has seen enough. He needs a timeout. Crucial part of the basketball game for that man. 355 left first half. Duke 41, Georgia Tech 32. And now this word from our good friends at Bud Light. 
Duke stretches out to the nine point lead and one of the reasons is their players have such diverse skills Christian Leitner against Newbill gives the fake that Newbill has to respect because Leitner can hit the three and then he just explodes to the basket nobody comes to step in his way I don't blame them with Travis best on the bench a seven nothing Duke run since Geiger went up the game it's 17 to 5 Duke. Of course, Georgia Tech still has the strong inside game, but with best out of the game, can get some more pressure on the perimeter if you do. There's Newbill with the strong play inside. Again, another offensive stick back for Georgia Tech, and Malcolm Mackey putting it in. The strength of Georgia Tech is still out there. It's the inside game. That's where they have to go. Maybe slow down a little bit, but they've got to work to get the ball inside. Excellent job. Ryan Davis again from the outside. Once again, he's got that toe on the line, so he gets two instead of three. Duke back up to a nine-point advantage. Forrest on knuckleball, rebounded by Parks. Davis intercepting the alley-oop attempt was John Barron. Penetrates, and we have got a foul called on the Blue Devils. Foul's going to be called against Bobby Hurley. That may not have been a very Number good play 11, by John Barry. Bob. We talked about the fact that Georgia Tech still has their inside strength. Here comes Barry trying the penetration. Notice that none of the inside guys for Georgia Tech are moving to the basketball. Barry gets fouled, but you can see on the end of that replay, there's nobody open in there. Hill penetrates. And Leitner clearing it off for Duke. Long lead for Hurley. Look away to Thomas Hill, but some good defense that time by Malcolm Mackey. And Georgia Tech is coming back two on one. Hill. But the man back was Leitner. We've got a foul. And they call it on Brian Davis. Much to the chagrin of the Duke partisans. Maybe a little inexperience on the part of James Forrest right there. Forrest at about six feet eight. Maybe he's the guy that ought to attack late. And here the pass goes. Forrest gives it up. And here's Brian Hill about 6'3 or 6'4. He's just overmatched. Nobody blocks out Mackey. I don't know what anybody's complaining about. Davis really almost takes his arm off here. Here comes Mackey. Davis assures that he's not putting that ball back up. Back for Malcolm Mackey is his seventh point of the game. He's having just a tremendous season coming off a big night at NC State Wednesday when he scored 24 points, 12 rebounds, and five assists. Closing in on 1,000 points in his Georgia Tech career. And for Mackey missing the foul shot. That was the hey. Uh, free throw defense for the Duke fans that time. And that's the best one they've got. Statistically speaking. <laughs> Here's Leitner inside. Well, they've got to come and help against Leitner. You just cannot let him back in there like that. Duke leading 43-38. Leitner that time, their help was there from Newbill. They come up with the ball. That's the way Bobby Cremens wants him to play Leitner inside. That's excellent defense. This is where the Georgia Tech bench comes into play. They've still, even with Geiger and Best on the bench, they've got some guys who can play out there and they can certainly play defensively. Vincent. But a what? And Forrest working inside. Had it stripped that time, though. Luke pulls it out. Grant Hill. Early. Blocked. Bury the ball. Grant Hill found it. Georgia Tech in the bonus. This first personal foul. Mike Krzyzewski looks like he's trying to pull his shirt back so he can tell what time it is. <laughs> Again, a three on two break. Hurley takes it right into the crowd. Some struggling going on inside. Barry's going to get fouled as he tried to break out. It's a very interesting <laughs> sequence right there. One thing that you'd have to say, Bob, with four minutes and 40 seconds left when Best goes out, the lead is seven, and Georgia Tech has hung around. Duke has not been able to stretch out the lead. What spot in the lane? And the 
Ball boys attending to it. John Barry has scored 15 for Bobby Crummins here in the first half. 66% foul shooter coming into the game. Well, I'll tell you what, that floor ought to be dry and clean. We spent a lot of time down there on right? that particular occasion. Well, it's a TV game. <laughs> you know, you gotta, you gotta let mom and dad see on camera. John Barry was 16. 44-37 in a minute 35 remaining in the first half. 43-37, Bob. We're looking for the scoreboard here and they just fixed it. 43-37. Loose ball. Turnover for Grant Hill. And the John Perry controls the dribble. Thomas Hill blocks it. But that's going to be goaltending. John Perry. Perry now with 18. One thing that Mike Krzyzewski has been worried about with his team is they have played in spurts. This is just a great move by John Barry. And Duke looks like they're going through a little bad spurt right now. Georgia Tech hanging around with two of their starters on the bench in foul trouble. Thomas Hill trying to get it inside against Vincent. James Forrest picks up his first ball. Beautiful feed from Hurley. Duke has been able to get the ball inside and draw fouls. Of course, that's typical of the Duke attack. They like to attack inside, but they've been able to accomplish that today when their people inside have shown movement without the basketball and Grant Hill moving without the ball very well. Antonio Lang will take Brian Davis's spot in the Duke lineup. Grant Hill to the free throw line. 71% coming into the contest. The preseason All-America averaging just under 16 points per game. He exploded here Monday night against Florida State for 26 points. He's been at double figures in all nine Duke games so far. Duke up 44-39. 45-39. Duke with the pressure again. Grant Hill's just a perfect guy to play the point on that pressure defense. John Barry to the cutting Vincent. And he gets it to drop. Freddie's first bucket. And what a first half offensively Barry continues to have. He's keeping Georgia Tech in the ball game. About a two second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Bobby Hurley and Christian Leitner out at midcourt listening to Mike Krzyzewski. That's the game clock. They'll start in about five seconds. And look who they started with. Mr. Grant Hill. You know, we talk about the skills that these Duke guys have. Hill can get it there. He's going to be hard to stop. Loose ball. Leitner's got it. Shot clock at one. Hurley buries the three. And the first half is over. A big bucket for that young man, and Duke leads by seven. Let's go down to Paul Cameron. All right, Bob, thanks so much. Thomas Hill came out of the box, missed four of his first five shots. John Barry, as you guys talked about, has been shooting lights out for Georgia Tech. Tech goes up by five, and then Geiger and Bess get in foul trouble. They sit down. Duke comes right back and extends the lead to nine. And uh, as you just saw, Bobby Hurley buries the three, and we are at halftime right here. We've got a big show to come. It's Georgia Tech trailing Duke by seven at the break. We'll come right back to Cameron Indoor after you watch this. Today's ACC action is brought to you by Nationwide Insurance, Norwegian Cruise Line, Ford, Food Line, and by True Value Hardware. Halftime clock is winding down here in Durham as Duke leads by seven over Georgia Tech, 48 to 41. Now it's time for this week's Norwegian Cruise Line ACC Trivia Contest. Here is the question. What school won the first three ACC titles in 1954, 55, 1956? One for you old-timers here. Write your answer on a postcard along with your name and phone number. Mail it to ACC Trivia Contest. P.O. Box 33367, Charlotte, North Carolina, 282 
three three again post office box three 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 six seven which school won the first three ACC championships a winner will be drawn at random from all correct answers received by January 17th that's your deadline and will be awarded an exciting cruise for two on Norwegian Cruise Line we'll be announcing the name of the lucky winners for the correct answers to the questions beginning next weekend well, once again, it is Duke leading by seven on the strength of Bobby Hurley's three-pointer. But I got to feel like Georgia Tech's young players, namely Travis Best and Forrest, both have uh, accepted the pressure of playing here at Cameron Indoor. They've done very well for Georgia Tech. As uh, Dan Bonner pointed out, the Jackets keep hanging around. Well, let's go back upstairs and hang around with our guys who will call the second half. Here's Bob Rathman and Dan Bonner. Okay, thank you very much, Paul. Pretty much what we expected. You've got two quality basketball teams, and they played each other pretty much even in that first half. Good half of basketball. Really a very good half of basketball, and it's quite interesting to see Duke would make a spurt when they would use, their, when they would go to their strengths, and they would be able to exploit those strengths against Georgia Tech. On the other hand, Georgia Tech would, when they were able to play to their strengths, they really came back in the basketball game. Seesaw fair. The decisive factor of the first half was the fact that not only Geiger, but also Best went out with foul trouble. And with those two guys out of there, Duke was able to take control of the game, but not to break away. And I really thought the biggest play of the first half was that three-pointer by Hurley to end the half. It seemed like Georgia Tech had some momentum. The clock is running down, and Bobby Hurley, what a tough, tough little kid. It's like he never makes the three-point shot until it's absolutely necessary. And on this particular play, that's the game clock right there. You can see the clock running down. Bobby Hurley gets open, and as the half ends, drills that three. You mentioned earlier in the first half that he has struggled from the three-point line this year, but when he's had to have them, as they did, as he did in that game up in Virginia when Duke pulled out the victory, he's hit the big yeah. shot. And at Michigan, too, that's don't right. forget, he's hit the big ones. Well, that's the Pepsi game summary. We're at the half here at Cameron Indoor Stadium with the Duke Blue Devils leading the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. And our halftime score is 48 to 41 in favor of Duke. We will continue with more. We'll take a look at the halftime numbers and get our second half underway from Cameron Indoor when we continue right after these important messages. Raycom and Jefferson Pilot Sports exclusive coverage of ACC basketball is brought to you by Buick, Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company, AT&T, Gillette, and by Infinity. Stay tuned for the Nations Bank Players of the Game Award. Nations Bank will contribute $1,000 to the Atlantic Coast Conference to be distributed among the member institutions under a conference-approved plan. That's the Nations Bank Players of the Game to be awarded near the end of our broadcast. Along with Sports Center host Paul Cameron, Bob Rathman, Dan Bonner here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. A 48-41 Duke lead here at the half. And let's take a look at those halftime numbers. The U.S. Air halftime stats. Duke shooting 54% holding their own on the rebounds. I think the interesting thing about it, Georgia Tech with that low shooting percentage, we talked about which team would get the easy opportunities. That team might have the advantage. Duke shooting a higher percentage, I think, because they've gotten better shots. And you notice Duke also doing a better job attacking inside. Eight for 11 from the free throw line. That's typical of Duke basketball. For Georgia Tech, Matt Geiger only has two points at halftime. John Barry carrying the load as we get a chance to look at the scoring leaders here. You can see Barry with 18 points. Everybody else contributing, but Barry has definitely shouldered the load. And as we said, Geiger with only two points at halftime for Duke. Christian Leitner missed two free throws about midway through the half and then exploded. He's got 18 points. Hurley on the strength of that last three-point shot has nine. I think it speaks to the Duke depth. A player like Grant Hill takes three shots in the first half, scores six points, and Duke's leading by seven. There's Bobby Kremens. Another point for him to contemplate is Thomas Hill for Duke, who scored 25 points in the victory against Maryland, only has two points at halftime. Duke with a lot of weapons. They sure will make him use them all. Travis Best and Matt Geiger in the lineup to start the second half for Georgia Tech. So the original starters out there for both teams. And Best off the dribble, bangs it in. That's a two-point shot. Travis has eight. The Duke lead stands at five. One of the reasons that it's important that Geiger stay in the basketball game is that Grant Hill is trying to match up against Geiger inside when Duke is on defense, and, Duke, and Georgia Tech ought to have an advantage there. Grant Hill. Davis put it on the floor, 
and was fouled by Forrest. You saw on that particular play Matt Geiger being very passive, and he has to be passive in there when Duke is going to take it right at him. He cannot afford to get that fourth foul early. So Duke's senior co-captain, Brian Davis, heading to the free throw line where he is three of four today. He had a good first half with seven points. And hitting a couple of long-range jump shots. Not usually noted for his outside shooting, but you're right, Bob. He hit a couple of big outside jumpers in the first half. Oh. One for two at the line. Leitner on the back of Geiger. And that is the second foul for Leitner this afternoon. Duke was very concerned about their post defense coming into the ball game, and you can understand why with Mackey averaging 19 points a game, Geiger averaging 15 points a game. So that's 34 points a game between those two guys. Mackey with seven, Geiger, as we mentioned, with only two in the first half. So Duke doing the job inside defensively. And Ivano Newbill, who did such a great job off the bench against North Carolina State earlier in the week, for Georgia Tech did not score in the first half. So Duke doing a nice job defending the Georgia Tech inside game. So the Geiger was open and Barry did not get in the ball. Forrest working the baseline and that is going to be a double dribble. And we had a lot of points scored in the first half. 48 to 41 is a lot of points. Particularly given the fact that Duke plays pretty good defense, but Georgia Tech, they're a team that scores a lot of points. They came in averaging 88 a game. We'll see if that pace continues in the second half. Grant Hill, nothing up his sleeve this time. Thomas Hill. And Forrest starts the Georgia Tech attack. Mackey. And uh, the whistle sounded, I think the. Uh, Russell may have slipped out of uh, Rick Hartzell's mouth, but the foul was called on Grant Hill. That's an awfully difficult play to make. Grant Hill was behind Mackey and reached across and tried to slap at the ball. And that's almost always going to be called a foul. Mackey does a great job. Duke does not want to get trapped behind Mackey right there. And he slaps down. He never hit the basketball. He hit Mackey on the elbow. So Malcolm to the foul line. And again, for an official, you blow that whistle, and sometimes it pops out of your mouth, and it sounds like a real weak whistle, and the coaches right away are all over you, figuring that you're not confident with the call. <laughs> Malcolm missing the foul shot. It's one of those things, as an official, you think, gee, I just hate it when that happens. Mackey one for three at the line today. He's really improved his foul shooting. But misses two right here and now we've got a foul call and I think it's going to be on Geiger and it is he ran over Davis away from the ball he and Davis got tangled up coming off the free throw line Bob that's really a bad break for Georgia Tech but I think Geiger got the foul because he actually it looked to me like he swung his leg at Davis and hit Davis with his leg and had they just gone down in a heap and gotten up and run down the court there's no problem but Geiger reacted by swinging his leg and I think that's a good call 49 43 Duke leading nice tip away but Georgia Tech can't come up with the basketball Two minutes into the second half. Thomas Hill really pushing off to make some space at the basket. There's been a couple of times in this basketball game when Travis Best has found himself matched up against Thomas Hill. You can see Thomas Hill at six feet four, Best at five feet 11. That's a very, very good matchup for Duke Hill doing a nice job getting position inside. Grant Hill with a steal, but foul to do it. And that's four personal fouls on Grant Hill. He just ran right through Travis Best trying to get the basketball. Excuse me, three fouls on Grant Hill. 17-47 left, and John Barry to play it in. Here's Duke with the pressure again. They've gotten a couple of steals with that zone pressure. A great steal. 
Hands up by Grant Hill. Inside Thomas Hill. Lays it in so softly. He's got six, and Duke leads by ten. Barry lost the dribble. Gets it back. Bob, this may be one of the key possessions of the basketball game for Georgia Tech. Forrest recovers. Needs some help. Barry around the screen. Puts it home. And the Yellow Jackets respond. He's having a great time. A steal by Newbill. And here Duke is up 10. The crowd is really into the game looking for a defensive series. They get one there. Thomas Hill driving, dishing, Hurley open. In and out. Tipped. Tipped again. Brian Davis scores. Some tough, tough work on the boards by Grant Hill and Brian Davis. Hurley coming over and makes the steal, but we've got Hurley Step stepping out of line. bounds. Number 11, Brian. Mike Krzyzewski is not pleased with the call. Georgia Tech. 16-36 remaining in the ball game, and Duke leading 55-46. He's barking at Rich, Rick Hartzell. Hartzell's barking. <laughs> Another key possession for the Yellow Jackets. This time, Newville feeds best. And he hits it. Boy, playing with maturity beyond his years here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. We talked an awful lot about Georgia Tech's inside game, but Bob, it's been their perimeter game that is keeping them in this basketball game. 31 so far for the two guards as Thomas Hill connects. And as that basket went in, you could see Travis Best turn toward the Georgia Tech bench with the palms of his hands up. He simply cannot guard Thomas Hill inside, and there Hurley picks up the foul. 57-48, Duke. And we've got a timeout on the floor. Here at Cameron. No, nope, not yet. Just a substitution as Grant Hill comes out of the game and Antonio Lang comes in. Well, it's really hard to tell what we have in one situation or another. The horn isn't working here, and they're using this thing that can't be more than three inches tall to try to signal in the noise of this building. It's hard to hear. Duke really trying to pick up the pressure on the perimeter. Hurley, you'll note, is not really trying for steals against Best. He's trying to keep Best in front of him, cut down on that penetration. Hill gets the bounce. First bucket for Brian Hill, his first two points of the game. 57-50. And Hill is one of those guys who, again, is not noted as an outside shooter, so that was a big basket. Let's see if Duke tries to take advantage of that Travis Best-Thomas Hill match inside. Best fronting him in the low post. Hurley outside. Three point. 60 to 50. Gotta watch the five second count. Best a runner. Oh, my. Travis Best. Hello. That's a great move under great pressure off the dribble. Wow. I guess you have to be able to do those kind of things if you're going to score 80 points in a high school game, and Best did. Georgia Tech now playing a little zone defense. Leitner. Stuffs it. However, sometimes when you're a man-to-man -man team and you go to a zone, your guys think that it's time to rest, and Georgia Tech played that zone like they were all nailed to the floor, and Christian Leitner just moves to the basket and dunks it home. That's Hit. a bad shot. But Barry is there. Knocked away. And Davis, that's a foul on Hill. And how many times do you see that, Bob? A guy takes a tough shot and then comes back and commits the foul. 14-12 remaining. Duke leading by 10. And we do have a timeout. We'll be back in a moment. Now this word from our good friends at Budweiser. Duke with a 10-point lead. We talked about Georgia Tech going to the zone defense. And look at the Georgia Tech defenders. Only Best really moving inside. And as a result, Leitner with the little double clutch is able to get to the basket easily. 
If you're Bobby Cremins, your team normally plays man-to-man. -man. You switch to the zone because you can't handle that matchup Thomas Hill against Best. You want your guys to be active, to be waving their arms around to make it difficult for Duke, but that guy right there does a nice job recognizing what the defense, finding the open spot and getting the basket. 62-52, Luke leading Georgia Tech. 14.09 left, second half. And for Georgia Tech, it's a matter of trying to pick it up on the defensive end of the court. Duke has hit six of ten shots in the second half. Make it seven of eleven. Hey, he's got every shot in the book. It's almost like you've got to double team him every time inside, make him give up the basketball. Great hustle. Leitner started it with the poke away, and Thomas Hill leaves it short. Leitner crashes and tips it in. Bob, there were four Duke players down the court. Nobody from Georgia Tech ran down to help out that time. Hill with a tough shot, but his teammates are all there to tip it in. Duke by 14. This place is going bad. that Hurley has been able to place on Travis Best. Best doing an awfully nice job containing Hurley out of the point. Hurley with a pretty good dribble move, but you see Best moves his feet and gets in position. That's an awfully tough pass that Hurley tried to make. 66-52, Duke on top. Brian Hill on the ball game. Georgia Tech actually going to a three-guard line. Left alone for three. Georgia Tech wants a timeout. They'll take it right here. On their feet at Cameron Indoor Stadium, the Dukies on top, 69 to 52 over Georgia Tech. We'll be back after these words. We mentioned at halftime about that dream team. Here's that number again to vote for. On that True Value ACC Dream Team, it's 1-900-884-6222. That's 1-900-884-6ACC for the True Value ACC Dream Team. Bob Brown's been Dan Bonner, Paul Cameron with you here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. 69-52, Duke leading Georgia Tech. And, well, this one, Mr. B opened up to a 17-point spread in a hurry. Got out of hand quickly, and one of the reasons is John Barry has been sort of cut off by Duke. Another Tech turnover, that swarming defense. Look at the bounce lead. Hurley leads it for Hill. Oh, my. You're Bobby Tremens and you call a timeout. That's not what you want to see out of the timeout. John Barry, contact at the block. But Bob, to get back to the point that we were making about John Barry as Thomas Hill may have well, gotten the wind knocked out of him. But John Barry carried Georgia Tech in the first half. As you can see, he's trying to get the ball up the court there, runs into Thomas Hill. Hill falls very, very hard. That's a pretty good call. Hill wasn't set. But Barry carried Georgia Tech in the first half with 18 points. In the second half, he only has one field goal. That was a three-pointer, but he's been limited to three points. One, or excuse me, two turnovers now in the second half. So Duke continues to shut off the Georgia Tech inside game. But they've also taken away John Barry on the perimeter. You can see there the Blue Devils outscoring Georgia Tech by 12 over the last three minutes. Dave Engelhart, the Duke trainer coming over, reminds us to pass along our best wishes to Max Crowder, the longtime Duke trainer. Underwent surgery and uh, missed his first Duke game in 899 at that Michigan contest. Want to wish Max the best. I so, haven't seen him, but somebody said Max was supposed to come to the game today. The runner by Barry. He urged you. 23 for John Barry. But if Georgia Tech is to turn it around, it has to begin at the defensive end. Absolutely, Bob. Nobody comes back strictly on the offensive end because when you're down 17 points, you can't afford to trade baskets with the other guy. 
Geiger, of course, back in the ballgame with the four fouls. Leitner. I don't know if there's a shot we haven't seen from Christian Leitner. There was his third foul, however. We've seen turnarounds. We've seen power dunks. We saw a couple three-pointers. See Made. drive to the basket. Oh, yeah, that too. We got that covered too. <laughs> Stay tuned for the Players of the Game Award. It's brought to you by Nations Bank. To the free throw line, James Forrest. Two shots, guys. Another in a long line of great freshman talent. And Bobby Crubbins is recruited to Georgia Tech. You think back to that run of ACC Rookies of the Year. As Forrest bangs in the foul sheet. Number 34, James Forrest. He was the Georgia Prep Player of the Year last year at Southside High in Atlanta. It looks like he's got a build on him that could stand up to the ACC battles that he'll be facing. I wonder if uh, Bill Lewis, the new football coach, is interested. No way as big as he is. Here's Leitner inside. Think, back, and a foul. Bob Duke is doing an excellent job getting the ball inside to Leitner and then drawing the defense away from him. I just do not believe that you can let Leitner, who does a great job getting position. Now watch, there's no defense come for a while. He's able to see, to react, set up his move. Now when Geiger finally does come over, it's all over because Leitner's got the whole thing set up the way he wants it. You cannot let a person with the talent of Leitner have the ball that close to the basket and have that much time to decide what he's going to do. Amazing. He has missed three of four at the line today. This is an 86% shoe this year who hit 35 in a row earlier this season. 27. And with that free throw ties Dick Broad for ninth on the all-time Duke scoring list. Barry's free run down Grant Hill. Barry with a steal, but it's lying ahead to Brian Davis. To the cutting Hurley. Back to Leitner. Couple of fakes. Two more. What a catch by Leitner. 20 point spread. Brian Davis diving for it. Up 20. They don't quit. Best for three. And Duke is running three on one. Crummins wants another timeout. It's going from bad to worse for the Yellow Jackets. Number one, Duke sending out a message. 10-24 to play in the game. Duke leading 78-56. Now this word from our good friends at Budweiser. Back here at Cameron Indoor Stadium, Duke leading by 22. Christian Leitner has scored 29 points today, and he is now tied for eighth on the all-time list in Duke scoring with Jeff Mullins with 1,888 points. And Jeff will bring his UNC Charlotte team in here next weekend. His highly ranked UNC yes, Charlotte team indeed. in the top 25 playing very well. Timeout, Duke showing you a little zone defense on the half court. Particularly in the second half, Bob. Duke's defense has just shut off everything that Georgia Tech has tried to do. The Yellow Jackets cannot run their offense, and when you can't run your offense, it's just hard to score points. Good recovery on Travis Best that time. Here's Barry reversing. Doggy oh. battling later for the ball, and Nathan Christian eventually comes away with it. Now, of course, Geiger's had foul problems the entire game, Bob, but he really hasn't given it. Early to take the good three. 80 to 56. And that's a charge on Barry. Taken by Layton. He's hit every column today. <laughs> 
15 foul. When you have the basketball, the defense does not have to give you any time or distance. If Barry had not had the basketball, that's probably a block. But Barry had possession of the ball, and so Leitner can step in there. The only thing about that charge was it took Christian a long time to eventually hit the deck. That's, that's a big kid, 6'11". Takes a while. Early for three. The roof has fallen in on Georgia Tech here. You know, we said earlier this morning, Dan, no way they can get beat by 41 again. But this has just turned into a nightmare for Bobby Crump. One of the things that happened is Bobby Clemens has to start the second half with Best and Geiger both with three personal fouls. They know they have three personal fouls as Leitner gets a big hand as he goes out. And I think maybe they start the second half a little bit passive on defense. They don't want to pick up that fourth foul early. And as a result, I think Duke is really able to get into the flow of their offense because the Georgia Tech defense isn't quite as aggressive. Then Geiger picks up his fourth foul on a very odd play real early in the second half. Duke's defense, they can afford to be aggressive. Whenever you play Duke, you always run the risk of being driven out of your offense, and that's exactly what has happened to Georgia Tech. Matt Geiger has scored four points in the game. Two in each hand. Certainly a big story. Geiger averaging 15 a game coming in, 83-58. Keep it the lob from Hurley too long. That's a tough pass to make, throwing it over the top of Geiger, but had he been able to get that ball just a little bit shorter, Parks had a dunk. The Georgia Tech defense is very, very passive right at the moment. Best 4-3. Duke running. Hurley's got Thomas Hill up ahead. And he lays it in. Boy, when Hurley threw that pass, I thought that ball's going out of the gym. Hill ran it down. Geiger putting one in off the glass. 85-60. Hurley had something to say to Cherokee Parks about that. <laughs> Parks, Clark alone on the baseline, and he traveled. Bob, we talked about Georgia Tech's defense being a little bit passive as Geiger throws the ball in. Clark walked that time, but he had a wide open cut to the basket there. It looks like somebody lost him on the defensive end. Barry outside. Hits this one. Three pointer. 26 for John. He's hit in the game four three pointers. 85 63. Duke really spreading the floor on offense. Forced that one a little bit, but obviously they're trying to go at Geiger, who has four personal fouls. Barry, another three pointer. Mackey pops it home. First second half basket for Malcolm Mackey. Timeout, Duke. And Duke is taking a timeout. Seven minutes and ten seconds remaining in the second half. The Duke huddle as the Blue Devils hold a 20 point lead, 85 65. Bob Rathman, Dan Bonner, Paul Cameron back here at Duke, 85-65, the Blue Devils on top. Just a bit of business news. We'd like to congratulate one of our ACC basketball producers, Steve Craddock. He and his wife, Dawn, the proud parents of a new baby boy, Russell Stephen Craddock, who came into this world here in Raleigh yesterday morning. Congratulations to the Craddock family. 85-65, Duke leading. And here comes Thomas Hill, bringing it up. Malcolm Mackey entering the game averaging 20 points a game, Bob. Only two points in the second half. I think Clark missing that one. And 11 for the ball game. Make that 13. Now that's seven points in a row for Georgia Tech. Mike Krzyzewski called that last time out because Duke had gotten a little bit passive. Nothing passive about that. Georgia Tech losing Clark. 87-65. Coach K has put Leitner and Grant Hill back at the scorer's table. 
Barry underneath Geiger fouled by Clark. Well, there is a tendency for if you're a college basketball team that Duke has worked so hard up to this point with six minutes and 25 seconds left in the game, and they ran out to the 25-point lead. There is a tendency to relax, and if you relax, Georgia Tech is a team with an awful lot of firepower. They are capable of coming back, and that's what Mike Krzyzewski doesn't want to see. He doesn't want to see his team get passive and allow Georgia Tech back in this basketball game. Two shots. Matt Geiger at the line. Point number seven. That fourth foul came at 18-18 in the second half on Matt, and boy, the Devils never looked back. Leitner secures it. He's out there with Hurley, Grant Hill, Clark, and Thomas Hill. The Blue Devils looking for their 21st consecutive victory at Cameron in Burst Day. They're up by 19. And you can see here what kind of problems Georgia Tech is going to have coming back in the game. Georgia Tech knocks the ball out of bounds there, but there's no way that Matt Geiger can guard Grant Hill out on the perimeter. Those big guys really help you out in a game where you're ahead or it's an even game and you can play your game. Grant Hill hit the deck hard, but still put it in. But if you're going to try to mount a comeback with some defensive pressure, those big guys are not going to be able to guard the smaller, quicker Duke player. Mackey trying to spin it in. What a foul on Duke. Fouls against Grant Hill. More ACC action coming up. We'll have the Florida State Seminoles with their first visit to Winston-Salem as they take on Coach Dave Odom, Stephen Deacons of Wake Forest. Next, our second game in our doubleheader Saturday. And this ACC Network stage. 5.54 is the time remaining here at Cameron. Number 32, Malcolm Mackey on the line. Mackey, we mentioned, having a tough time today against Duke. Has eight rebounds, only two of those coming in the second half, and he struggled all day from the free throw line. Yeah, he's missed four straight, man. And he shot 41% at the line as a freshman, 60% last year, and 71% coming into this game today, but there's been a lid on it so far. This breaks through, 12 points for Mackey, 89-69. Oh, a roadblock screen by Leitner. To Best's credit, he kept right on going. He bounced off and got down the court. He is still with us. <laughs> His head's got to be buzzing, though. Grant Hill. Oh, what, what a tremendous burst. Mackey stripped by Clark out of bounds. Unless Bobby Cremens is going to change the look of his team, put in smaller guys. <laughs> Geiger just can't guard him out there. 91-69 Duke. Starts the running game to Hurley. Pulls up. Grant Hill tipped it out. But now they say last touch by Georgia Tech. John Barry, who had such a big, big first half, has been relatively quiet in the second half. Again, Georgia Tech had 41 points at halftime, Bob, and they said, well, that's an awful lot of points, 48 to 41. Can they maintain the pace? Well, Duke has maintained the pace, but for Georgia Tech, no way. And there's Geiger fouling out of the game. You knew that was coming. So Matt to the bench. Number 30. Seven points, but well, when you look at his game today, circle the minutes play, Colin. They just weren't there when Tech needed them. Only one rebound for Geiger. Ninety-one sixty-nine. Later. I thought he was.
was too far underneath. No, no problem. 31 for Lake. That was a horse shot that he just made. Forrest. James with 10. Ninth time this year he's been a double figure. I'm sure the Georgia Tech coaching staff is very happy to see that. Forrest in his first ACC road game up in Raleigh the other night in a Georgia Tech win really did not play very well. If there's a positive thing about this game for Georgia Tech it might be that Forrest reacted very well today. Big collision. Between Hurley and Newville, they sit at the floor at the other end and watch Perry lay it in. <laughs> well, they may as well. And that, that was a very interesting picture. They just sat there together. When the ball went in the basket, they both got up and got set to go again. 93-73, Duke. You can understand Hurley. He hadn't been out of the basketball game. Now here's Leighton. I'm going to show you more of his back hits. Mackey's got to be running. Geez, just go down inside. Thomas Hill. Here's Leitner sticking it back in. 33 for Christian. His career high is 37. Now we've got a lot of guys at the scorer's table for Duke. Mike Krzyzewski just about to call off the dogs here the next time play stops. Problem for Bobby Clemens is those guys he puts in the game are no slouches. Grab his best with 14. Christian Leitner walking up the court with his hands on his head. I like it out here better. <laughs> now see now a little, little rest. Mackey's thinking, oh, come on, don't go out there. This is tough for Forrest, too. The, the versatility of the Duke team is just... This really hits you in a ball game like this. They can take their guys and play inside, they can play outside, and bang you on the boards, they can shoot from the perimeter. Clark tried to give it right back inside to Grand Hill. Marty with the interception, but loses it. Now John Barry for three. Good by Leitner. It's Leitner again. Oh, he's some... exhausted and now he's <laughs> that, 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 We gotta call a timeout to get him in. 209 left. Just a tremendous performance. 95-75. Duke leading by 20. So with the timeout on the floor, let's pause for this word from the Atlantic Coast Conference. As Duke leads by 20, that fist up at the bottom of your screen is Christian Leitner. He's telling Bobby Hurley to come on. He's going to measure Travis <laughs> Fist and just drill him with that screen. Fist. We would be interesting to know if recovered well and got back down the court, but that's a big guy to run into. Leitner done for the day. You know, it's, it's hard sometimes to rate performances in the scale of, you know, where it fits into the grand scheme of things. But I can't remember a big guy in this league having this kind of a day in all aspects of the game against such quality opposition. I mean, he has just done everything. He's had a tremendous, tremendous game. Blakeney loses it, best with the steal, and Blakeney pushed him. Foul Kenny Blakeney getting in. Duke in the second half, folks, has shot 68% from the field, hitting 21 of 31. More ACC action coming up on Tuesday night. Check your local listings for this one at 9 p.m. Primetime action as these Yellow Jackets look to bounce back at home against Jeff Jones and the Virginia Cavaliers. His best has scored 14 today, eight of them in the second half. Fourth in the league in assists and fifth and three point percentage coming into this game today. He was the writer's choice in the preseason as the ACC Rookie of the Year. 95 76. Pressure by the Jackets. Duke beats it. Eric Meek has it rejected in the second row by James Forrest. Georgia Tech still hustling out there, getting down the court. It was Forrest to block that shot. If you're Georgia Tech, you're just hoping the clock runs quickly so you can get out of here. 
Loose ball. Mackey to best. Well, the years change, the players change, but this has been a house of horrors on the overall for Georgia Tech. They have won only twice in this building in 18 tries. Well, Georgia Tech coming in the league at a point where there's been nothing really but good teams here. To Davis, Davis was another easy one. Vincent. Over the backboard, Duke ball with a minute 20 left. Vincent has been a big contributor for Georgia Tech from the three-point line, and he hasn't really played very much at all today. That Duke defense, they cut off what they need to. Blakeney giving it to Parks, but Best is there to pick it off. And up ahead, Forrest slams it. 80. And of course, at this stage of the game, you don't really, there's not really very much offense or defense going on. Everybody going up and down the court. This will be the first time all year that Georgia Tech is going to drop a basketball game in which they've scored 80 points or more. Marks. Lang got a hand on it, but Forrest got a hand on Lang. Bobby Hurley, we've talked about uh, him today with his defense on best, but he had a whale of a game, too. He contributed 17 points and a dozen assists. And that 12 assists ties his single game high for the year. Ryan Davis comes out. He hits a big outside jumper as early. He scored 14. All five Duke starters in double figures. Bob, and as we look back over this basketball game, I, I thought at halftime that the biggest play of the first half was Hurley's three-pointer mm, to end the absolutely. half. Absolutely. And as I look back over the game, Duke, you, they, the momentum that they seemed to gather from that particular play, they just took in the second half and stayed right with it. And so that Hurley three-pointer really set the tone for the second half. Georgia Tech never recovered from that particular play. If he misses that, it's a four-point game at halftime instead of seven, and there's... The in-between pass <laughs> in between Aston me. Splitting the defenders. <laughs> it's a field goal pass. 97-82. Okay if it splits the defenders. You know no, that's the, split offensive the offensive player. guys. Yeah. <laughs> Too long. Mackey finishes his day with 16. And for Georgia Tech, this is mercifully going to end. It is a 13-point victory in the record books, but a very decisive victory for Coach K and the Duke Blue Devils this afternoon. Our final score, Duke 97, and the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets 84. Paul Cameron is standing by. He'll be joining us with some post-game interviews, so stay